welcome to the Illustrator. I'm Jason Olsred and today I'm going to show you how I create ghosts using Photoshop. All right, so before I get started, what I do is invite you to go on over to photillustrator.com, check out the resource center of my website. That's where I put all the goodies in there, how to how I do compositing. Uh, the business stuff, what I know about business uh, from building several small businesses and what I'm learning as far as uh, getting work and those type of thing, case studies, inspirations, Q and A, testimonials, all the good stuff is in the resource center over at potillustrator.com. Go check that out. All right. So today's tutorial is on a composite that I just recently finished and it was really inspired by a photographer by the name of Robert Cornelius. Now I found Robert, I think on a Google search, you know, I always go through Google. I'm always searching for, uh, photo composites that I like and photographers that I like and those type of things. I came across Robert's work and absolutely fell in love with it instantly. And I believe the reason I did is because it was the lighting and his use of color, man, that just popped out at me. And I, you know, I was inspired to create something uh along that line and so i really wanted to use the dramatic lighting the color the use of color and all those type of things uh absolutely love robert's stuff uh, he's got a great eye sees the world in a very unique stylized way so i absolutely recommend go check out robert's uh work over at his website which is at robertcorneliusphotography.com and of course i'll put those links in the show notes below so you can easily connect uh, with Robert. So check him out. Also real quick before I get started and I wanted to give a shout out to Wacom tablets. Now I am not a, you know, they're not a sponsor of the show or anything like that. Uh, they don't know who I am or, you know, they don't know my work or anything. I just wanted to, uh, seriously give a shout out to Wacom tablets. I don't know what I would do without my tablet. I mean, th this thing is one of the most important tools that I use for my composite photography. And I can't even imagine uh, trying to build these composites, even probably simple composites, without a Wacom tablet. Because uh, I, I guess unless you're a glutton for punishment or just love having carpal tunnel by using your mouse, um, in which I'm not either one of those, why would you not get a Wacom? So definitely, if you're serious about compositing and, and really putting together some um, great work. I absolutely think that Wacom, you know, having a Wacom tablet is necessary. Go out, get one. It's worth every penny and more that you'll ever spend on it. And, and I use mine all the time. All right. So let's jump into how I build ghosts in Photoshop or how I make them. And, and before we get started here on this, I wanted to say, if you stick around to the end of this video, I'm going to reveal something that I learned from this composite. I think this is really important. So stick around for this at the end of this video. All right. So this is the composite one step before it's actually finalized because from Photoshop, I take it back into Lightroom and I do some color tweaks. I'll do some sharpening and I'll do some vignetting, things like that. But this is one step before that. And then a few steps before that, from the blending and colorization and that type of thing. This is what an image, a composite looks like for me. And then before I put the ghosts in, of course, and then this is uh, really at the very, very beginning. Most of the time at the, at this stage, I'm like, how in the hell am I going to get this thing to look decent? <laughs> so that's where it is. And then this is just the canvas that I use, just an arbitrary image I put in to, to get the, uh, you know, um, cropping right and all that kind of stuff. All right, so let's go up here to our image uh, without ghost. And then I already have an image here of me that we're gonna use. And this is me, uh, the one that I actually use for the composite to scare the little girls coming over the, uh, the, the gravestone. So as you can see, I'm, I'm a very scary dude, all right? So I'm just gonna really quick show I, what I do to characterize it. I'll cut out the head, put it on a new layer, put a layer mask on that, and I'm gonna get rid of the bottom layer so we can see that. And then I'll take that, blow it up nice and big, make me look funny, which shouldn't be hard to do. And then make sure I put it just about in the right position, get my brush tool, go in here and start just brushing it out. Now on a ghost image, the, the image that you're gonna create for the ghost, 
you don't have to be super specific with your um your, your cutting out and that type of thing because we're going to blur things we're going to uh give them wavy you know a wavy feel and all that kind of good stuff so there's a lot going to go on that said though i really do spend time i want to make sure that everything looks good i'm not super you know specific about my cutouts like i would for my main character or something that's more important that looks blended because of the blur and everything that's going to happen but i am still pretty specific with this so after all said and done this is what i end up with and then i'll take this and i will drag it to my composite layer here and then just drop that in and then i'll bring this down and scale so we can fit it onto the canvas here maybe a little too small let's bring that back up just a little bit all right so this is me getting ready to scare people so we need to uh make this look like a ghost so how are we going to do that we're going to put a layer mask on it and then we're going to just start cutting it out and again you don't have to be like super specific so meaning that you don't have to use a pin tool or anything just make sure you get rid of all the uh stuff on the background because we don't want the background to show so make sure that you cut into it uh get the major lines of it all right so and then i'll you know i'll bring my tool down here just to get into the areas there like that go through all that so that's that and then once i'm finished cutting all this out i already have one cut out i'll take this erase it apply to the image and then it, that helps me save space on an old computer like i have so i already have this sucker done right here so we're going to go with this one next step you want to turn this into a black and white image here just as so make a copy of it and then we're going to go up and we're going to give this copy before i do that i want to turn my bottom layer off and so i'm only dealing with one layer can only see one layer give it a motion blur the motion blur is going to be zero angle and for this, I did a roughly around 30, 34, 35, something to that effect. Press OK. There you have it. And then we're going to go back to Filter, go to Distort, and go to Wave. All right, so in Wave, we want to make sure that our number generator is 1. We want to go to Wavelength is around 717. 853 and i have no idea why these numbers are the way they are um, i found a tutorial online for i think it was by marty over at blue lighting tv on his youtube channel i'll make sure that i put that link in the show notes below so you can see how he did it it's similar but because i think he's using an older version of photoshop there were some uh differences in in how we did it so uh Make sure you do a repeat edge pixel sign, type sign. have no idea what those means. I just put the numbers in uh, and then push OK. And you should get a nice little kind of wave, uh, you know, motion wave ghost there. All right. And then we're going to bring that opacity down to roughly 50%. Make a copy of that and then... Flip it horizontally. And then I like to bring that over just a little bit. Just like that. So you get a little separation there between the two. And then we're going to Bring that one back up. I'll bring him just in the middle there. Make a, another copy. Bring that to the top. And then I add on a, let's see here. Got to remember exactly what I did. So contrast, bring the contrast or the brightness up. Just like that. You can 
bring contrast up, you know, just find something that looks good for you, you know, attach it to the only one layer that we're going to be dealing with there. And then what I like to do is put a layer mask on that and in the layer mask with the layer mask selected, you're going to go to filter. You're going to, uh, let's see, render clouds and give it a cloud effect and that'll help it blend and then you can drop opacity down or you know whatever you want there with with uh, that you know whatever looks good to you and then final one here my main image I like to give that just a small subtle uh, blur blur Gaussian blur maybe a two let's see what that looks like maybe a little bit more three go something like that and then drop its opacity down something like that and then we I'm going to group those into a group and then we're going to add on our curves layer and in curves we can attach that to the group just so we make sure that it's the only thing getting color so we can go we can use curves we can use whatever we want here but we can take that up give it a really good blue bring the red down bring green up down you can use group I you know I don't know if I use the curves layer or if I used a uh, color balance layer I use color balance on this one you can use either one it's not like important you get a little maybe have a little bit more control less uh, and I think I use this one here that come up Anyway, you get the point here. I'm not going to make it perfect. Something to that effect there. Looks really good. And then what I did, get rid of that. take that and what I do <laughs> is I merge it because uh, to save space. And then from there you can take it and you know, you can blur it. You can give it some more motion blur. You might want to go in here on filter and give it just a tiny bit more motion blur. Not too much. Something like that looks a little bit better. Good. Just like that. And then take it. And drop it down and bring it back here to where you're going to put it. Just like that. And of course, mine was behind the trees. Good. And put a layer mask on it. And then I'll go in and just knock out some of this other stuff here drop my hardness down give it a nice soft edge do it just like that and then bring another layer above that and then from there you're going to get grab your brush tool uh, and this is just something a little extra that I did that I found that you know I liked the way it looked and so what I'll do is I'll go in and get a smoke brush something that looks kind of cool that might look kind of cool let's go with that and then angle it just like that make sure we have a white selected bring our size down just a little bit bring your opacity down other direction just play with it you know whatever you like here on this part of it I 
something to that effect there. And then what I will do from there is I'll just take that and give it a blur. Gaussian blur, maybe two, three, somewhere along that line, two or three looks pretty good there. Drop that opacity down. Just a little bit like that. And then of course I will erase some of this stuff down here because I don't want it to show. blend it just a little bit you bring that hardness of the eraser tool down and that'll uh not allow you to blend it a lot easier bring those together merge them and then you can bring that opacity down a little bit like that and there's your ghost you can do what you know you can have a really low in opacity you can have a bright I don't think bright looks very realistic, but that gives you a real good idea of how to build a ghost in Photoshop to make it look like that. All right. So that's how I build a ghost in Photoshop from point A to point B. Now, like I said, before we end this uh, video, I want to show you one thing uh, that I learned from doing this composite. So I went through the whole entire process of building this composite and taking it back in the Lightroom, uh, you know, finish, do my finishing touches. And this is what I came up with here on this, uh, on the final product. Now, it doesn't look bad. It's a bit more, obviously a bit more green than the other one. I had some issues with the color. It was a little he green heavy, didn't have enough red to offset that. So that was a little bit of an issue. But the bigger issues for me were that I had some mistakes in here that just looking at it, it's like, okay, I can deal with this. But then this mistakes for me just stu stood out way too much and way too obvious because I know when I put this on social media or I put this out to you guys that if it's not good, uh, if there's something that can be brought up that's not good, you will bring it up, all right? So it's important to me uh, that when I put my name on something, that it is worthy of my name, number one, and number two, that I'm proud of it. So the mistakes are one is there's a white line over here on the edge of this tombstone, and I just couldn't get past that. That was really bugging the crap out of me. There's also a little bit of a fuzziness over here, that type of thing. Uh, the grass here in the front was just too uniform and too perfect. It just didn't look good. I just didn't like that. And then the biggest part of it that I had a problem with were these trees. And when you blow it up here, you can really see the edges, you know, the white edge on the trees. It just didn't work. I mean, that was really bothering me. And then you go to the bottom down here and we see the tree edges here just are really bad, <laughs> really bad. All right, so none of that worked for me. So I had to basically go back into Photoshop and start from uh, the midpoint and go back and do everything. And I, I was worried at the time because I knew I wasn't gonna be able to recreate the image to look exactly like this. Colorizing would be a little different, those type of things. Fortunately, uh, going back and doing that actually allowed me to produce a better image. Number one, the, the mistakes were corrected, but number two, I think the colorizing of it was a lot better. And so I got a lot less green, a lot more blue and yellows out of it. Uh, and it looks more realistic to me than this would. All right, so too white here on that part of it. I like that. You can actually see a flame in there or what appears to be a flame. I didn't really create one. It just looks like it the way I did it. Uh, the grass looks better. The trees are way, 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 way better. Uh, you can see that all that, uh, you know, edging on the tree is, is gone. Uh, so this is a much better composite i'm so happy i went back and spent the additional two hours three hours whatever it took to uh, bring it from midpoint back to a final product that i actually liked and would, was willing to put my name on so this is how i build ghosts this is a little lesson that i learned in in this uh you know process of building this composite i hope that helps you i hope you see a little bit better of how my process works and and how you might be able to pick and choose little things out of it to bring into your process to make it more efficient and to make it more uh, realistic when you're doing compositing. Anyway, go out there, create
create some ghosts, put them into to some awesome composites, share them with us and let us know. And I'll see you next time on the Potillustrator. <laughs>